Point Church. Let's worship together. Come on, get those hands together.
been made before, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see you.
Good morning, CPC family. My name is Michael, and if you're unaware, we're about a week into our 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we wanted to do something a little bit different this morning. We wanted to give you an opportunity to join together with us as a church family as we pray over some specific things we want to focus on in this time. And you'll see those things here on the screen in just a second, actually, right now. And I'm so excited to get to pray with you about these things this morning, but, but here's something I want to see. I'm going to pray, but I would really appreciate it if I'm not the only person in this room praying. Because I believe that something incredible happens when a body of believers joins together. When we gather together and pray on one accord in unity, relying on our faith that we have in Christ Jesus. So as we pray, I want to hear you guys praying too, because we're a family, right? We're a family here, right? So let's pray together as a family. Let's focus on these things as we, as we come to God in prayer right now. Lord, first of all, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for your presence here this morning. I thank you that that presence is alive and real on the inside of all of us. I thank you that we can boldly walk into that into that presence that we don't have to be filled with guilt or shame because of what was purchased for us through the through the blood of Christ Jesus we can go boldly before you and so I pray that you fill us with that boldness as we pray here together this morning God we pray for an explosion of new believers 
and those new in the faith that they continue to grow, Lord. I pray for everyone in our surrounding areas and around our world. If they don't know you, Lord, I pray that they do. I pray that they will. I pray that you bring people into their path to speak your word boldly and confidently into their lives. Lord, I pray that as those seeds are planted, that they land on good soil and that they produce fruit, Lord God, that they produce real, beautiful and tangible relationships with you, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for spiritual renewal, Lord. I pray for that, not only personally, but corporately as a church family, Lord. I pray for anybody who is in a season right now where they just feel dry, they feel empty, they feel like they can't hear you, Lord. We've all been there. And I pray that in those moments, if, if, if that's anybody in this room, if that's anybody watching online, I pray that you give them a renewed spirit, Lord God, that you create a new heart within them. I pray for their faith to, to be built up in this moment when, when those doubts and those fears and those feelings of loneliness and emptiness come, Lord God. I pray that you surround them with your comfort, surround them with your peace, surround them with your love in a way that only you can, Father. God, I pray for wisdom and direction as we continue to grow in the mission that you've given this church. I pray for our pastors, our leaders, our elders, our administrators, those that make decisions. Lord God, I pray that you give us wisdom. I pray, Lord, that you help us not to rely on our own wants and needs and desires, Lord God, but to rely on your word, to seek after your heart, to seek after your truth, Lord God, because it's not about us in the long run, Lord God, it's about you. It's about what you want to accomplish through the people of this church, Lord. I pray, God, for your blessing and your provision, Lord, as we, as we prepare for our mad season, Lord, and I, I pray that I pray that that's not so that we can boast about a number, but that it's about the needs that are represented not only in this church family, but around the world. And I pray that you continue to put us in a position where we can use the resources that you have graciously blessed us with to reach around the world and to help people and love people, Lord. I pray that as we go into these new seasons as a church, I know that growth is coming, Lord God. So as that growth continues to happen, I pray that you would birth more of our groups and more leaders for those groups, Lord, because those groups are so important. It's what helps us build relationship as a church. It's what helps people to feel connected, to feel like they belong. And that's something that so many people in this world need, God. So I just pray that you would bless our, our group ministries, Lord God, as, as we continue to grow in you, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you help us to reach further in our, into our community, into our world, into the, the places around us. And again, not so we can boast about how cool we are and look at all these cool things we do, Lord God, but we want to reach people because it's what you've called us to do. Just as you left the 99 to find the one, I pray that you birth that desire on the inside of us to go and find that one, to go and find that person that's lost and broken and hurting and let them know that there's a way that they don't have to feel that way. They don't have to live under that, that they can walk in freedom and love and unity and be a part of a body of believers that loves God and loves them passionately. Father, I pray that you help us as a church and as leaders, Lord God, to develop more leaders and to nurture the gifts that are needed to fulfill the vision that you've given us, Father. I thank you for every man and woman in this church, the calling that you have on them, the destiny that you have in their lives, Lord God. And I pray that you just help us find ways to cultivate those things, to raise up passionate men and women who love God and want to tell the world about you. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this church and what you're going to continue to do in this church, individually and corporately, Lord, because we know that you're the source. Every good and every perfect gift comes from you, Father. We thank you for that. I can't wait to see what you do through us in this season, Lord. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just take it one step further today. Anybody in this place that has a need, something that you want to pray over, can you just lift your hand up? We're all in this together today. We're all in this together. Let's continue our worship this morning. 
Even when I don't see you work and Even when I don't feel it you work yeah. You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working today that he's bigger than our beliefs and if so then he's bigger than our unbeliefs God today wherever we're at wherever we're at in life God hear our heart today God we're a people that need you Today, you're bigger than any health issue. You're bigger than any job. You're bigger than any obligation. You're bigger than any dream. God, today we put it all at your feet today. God, we can't carry it alone. God, today we just give it to you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you're working. God, when we don't have the strength, when we can't carry it anymore, when we can't see past the next step, God. We're so thankful for a God that walks each and every step of the way and sometimes carries us. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. If you believe he's working today, can you give him some praise this morning? Amen. Amen. You guys can go ahead and be seated. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like church has been pretty good already, hasn't it? It's been a pretty good morning. Well, like I said, guys, my name is Michael, and I have the privilege of being the young adults pastor here at CPC, and I also have the privilege of hanging out with you guys as we continue into this time of worship, as we worship God in our giving. Before I do that, though, I want to let you know that if you are new here, if it's your first time or your first time in a while, you do have the opportunity to get a little bit more connected with us. All you've got to do is text the word GUEST to the number 573-340-4037. That just gives us a little 
opportunity to get some more information about you, you get some more information about us, and it just helps you get a little bit more connected with us as a church family. You can do that right now. Just text the word guest to the number 573-340-4037, or you can even scan that handy QR code that's there on the screen. But as, we, as we're doing that, I just, like I said, this is a time where we get to worship God in our giving, and that's something that we believe is important here to do as a family. Just like praying as a family is important, we also believe that giving as a family is important as well. And here at CPC, we actually make that incredibly easy. There's four incredible ways to give. All you gotta do is uh, you can text the amount that you wanna give to the number 84321. You can go to yourcpc.church slash give. We've got some drop boxes in the back there. You can drop your gift off that way as well. Or you can mail your gift to the address that you see on the screen. But as always, we encourage you to be a part of that as we, as we give together as a family. Let's go ahead and pray over those offerings. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your sweet presence that's here in this room with us. And it's also with everybody that's watching online. And we just thank you for the opportunity to gather together as a family to worship you, to learn about you, to love you, Lord. And I pray that as these gifts come, that you would do what only you can do with them, Lord, that you would uh, use those resources, stretch them around the world to bless as many people as possible. Because we can't do it on our own, Lord God, but we know that you're capable of any and everything, God. So we just thank you and we praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you believe that and you appreciate our God today and the power of his spirit, come on one more time, give him a shout of praise up in this house and watching online, giving praise wherever you are right now. Look at two people right now and tell them, I'm so glad to see you today. And we're so thankful for those of you who have tuned in online. Hey, congregation, can we welcome our online campus right now? Come on, let's give them some love. Appreciate you being with us as well. Uh, how's, how are you doing? You're, you're one week in, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, uh, I know it may feel a little awkward for some of you if you're not used to this. Uh, maybe you switched yours up a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest, I switched mine up a couple of times this week, just during the week, just to keep it fresh for me. You know, every day is like, all right, God, where are we going today? So uh, keep it fresh, continue to fast and pray with us. And one of the things I'm so excited about our online campus is our media team was even telling me that, uh, that we, we've got folks in other states who've been getting on their social media sites and announcing to their family and friends, hey, I'm doing 21 days of prayer and fasting with my church at yourcpc.church online. And so come, come on, one more time. You got to give it up for people who are fasting in other states with you, right? They're like, I won't make them suffer without me. So you got to give them some love for that. Thank you for being a part of this. And listen, no matter where you're at on the 21 day journey, uh, if you're new to our church and, and you're like, today's the first day you've heard about it and the Holy Spirit pricks your heart to jump in, jump in today, jump in. We have a few hard copies of the devotional guide left in the hub at the CPC swag counter, but all of you can download it as an ebook off of our website. It's right there on the homepage, yourcpc.church. So follow along with us. The devotions have been amazing. I'm so proud of our staff. They've done a fantastic job writing those devotions. They'll speak to your heart. So just go ahead and jump in. And hey, if you're in the prayer and fasting and you had a hiccup this week, maybe you stumbled, maybe you just blew it for a day. Hey, don't quit. It's a marathon. Get back in the race and let's keep going together because I truly believe we're going to hear testimonies of God doing some miraculous things uh, after this. In fact, I got, I got a text from a guy in our church this week and absolutely blew me away. He was just so tore up. He had a beautiful encounter with the Holy Spirit in his living room and he started texting me the things that God was giving him victory over right then in the middle of the week while he was praying and fasting. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise like he deserves in the house. Who knows what God's going to do when this is over? So keep going, jumping into that, all right? Listen, we're in a series called The Quest. And what is a quest? A quest is an adventurous journey with a mission. It's not just simply going on a hike. It's not simply going on a journey. When you're on a quest, there's a purpose behind it. 
And you're going to fulfill the purpose. And as you're going to fulfill the purpose, you have all these adventures along the way. Early this morning, uh, one of the many times I get up in the middle of the night, I, uh, I just, as soon as my eyes opened up, I just felt the Holy Spirit of God stirring in my own heart about today's message because I get so pumped up, uh, so worked up about being here with you on the weekends and love being here. And, and I got to thinking about our journey with Jesus. And, and just so maybe this will help some of you that are new to the faith. For every one of us, there must come a point where time stands still between you and God. There has to come a point in your life where you hear the call of God on your life, where you hear Jesus inviting you to receive him, receive his forgiveness, receive his grace, and come into the family of God. That's the moment where in the church world, we'll talk about, oh wow, that's the day you received Christ, or you were born again, or you were saved. What we're talking about is, is that moment when time seems to stand still, and you have to make a decision of what you will do with Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray you've all had that moment, that encounter. And I hope and pray in that moment, you said yes to Christ. You were going one direction. You were living in sin. You were living in your own ways after your own desires, whatever it was, you were doing your own deal. And God interrupted your moment. And God said, I want to be the Lord of your life. And my prayer is that you say yes to Jesus. If you haven't, I pray today is the day. Uh, I pray if you're on a search for spiritual things that you will ask God, God, give me that moment where time stands still. And you have to make a decision to say yes to God or no to God. And if you've had that moment where you say yes, then in that moment you say, God, come into my life, forgive my sin, become the Lord of my life. And when you give over the reins, the lordship of your life over to him, then you need to understand what happens from that moment forward. Because after receiving Christ, you don't just stand still. When you read the Gospels, you never see Jesus staying in the same place very long. In fact, when he, when he called people to come to him, he, he normally never said, believe in me. Believe in me. Though he wanted them to believe in him, right? But what would Jesus often say? How would the invitation come? What would it sound like? Jesus wouldn't say, hey, you, believe in me. Jesus would say, hey, you, come follow me. You see, when Jesus says, come follow him, there is that moment where you got to stop and you got to make a decision. Okay, am I going to keep going my direction or am I going to turn now and follow him? And by the way, that is the definition of the word repentance. The definition of the word repentance isn't groveling on the ground, apologizing for all your sins, even though we should repent and conf or confess our sins. The word repenting literally means to take a 180. You are going your own direction. Now you turn to go his direction. And the word literally means now I'm going to follow Jesus. By the way, did you know that early Christians weren't called Christians for, for about 20 years? Early followers of Jesus, the disciples and those right after the birth of the New Testament church, they were not called Christians, not until the gospel got up into a city called Antioch. At first, they were simply called followers of the way. And Jesus being the way, the truth and the life. And so we were called followers. What does it mean to, come a, to become a Christian, to follow Jesus? You have that moment where time stands still. But then you come out of that. Now he's the Lord. He's their master. And wherever he goes, you follow. And when you follow, you're trying to imitate him. You're trying to learn about him. You're trying to act like him. And here's the cool thing about Christianity. And I've told you this for a couple of Sundays now. Only Christianity of all the world's religions does the founder of the ministry then give all the responsibility of his own personal mission statement over to his followers. Jesus, for three and a half years, preached the gospel and preached the kingdom of God to come. I, evidently, our 21 days of prayer and fasting, what is the theme? Our theme is to pray, and I'm asking you all to pray every day, Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. And once it happens in you, then it can happen in the, in the world and on the earth, right? But for the change to happen out there, the, first is, the change has first got to happen in us. 
And so I want you praying that for 21 days. Why? Because Jesus gave us the mission that he lived out while he was on the earth. Now it's up to us. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, that means you're pretty important to the kingdom of God. It means you're pretty important to the kingdom of God. And and so now uh, what our challenge is, is now for us to live on this journey following Jesus. And it's going to be adventurous, but there's a mission tied to it. So our following Jesus now becomes a quest. just after his resurrection and just before his ascension into heaven, Jesus gave what we refer to in the scriptures as the great commission to his disciples. And over the next three weeks, what we're going to talk about is that as we're on this quest now, we're walking with Jesus, we got a journey with Christ, but there's a mission tied to it. And it's the same mission of Jesus that he had And we've got to fulfill that. So now it's a a journey with a mission. The next three weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some key elements. Uh, Really, it's a system that we can look back over 2,000 years of church history and we can see that the earliest disciples of Jesus followed a model that they have now passed on to us and we're still following it this morning. And if you're going to be successful in your quest to let the kingdom of God come into your life and then use you to impact the lives of those around you, I believe we need to pay attention to the pattern that Christians have followed for 2,000 years. Now, I have a a privilege that uh, from time to time I go uh, to different places and I teach church leaders, I coach Uh, churches and pastors on this very system. And and, and I do that with a group called Intentional Churches. And and what we we use this little pattern is three system and we call it the Great Commission Engine. And for the next three weeks, what we're going to talk about is we're going to go to the Bible and we're going to look at this pattern that we see in early Christians and we're going to see them. And and you know, a dude wrote this because he's building an engine. (laughs) It's only got three pistons, so it's a weed eater. All right, so <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, <laughs> and so we're, we're, going to, we're going to build this together, but all of this is is just taking, go, going back to the simple gospel and, and putting it in a way that's real easy for us to understand. And so today, let's look at the mission, and then we're going to see what the first stop is that can help encourage us on our quest to stay focused on the mission. Here we go. Look at the last words of Jesus, or some of his last words, rather, right before he ascends to heaven. This is right after the resurrection. It's called the Great Commission. Look at it. Matthew 28, 18, and 20. Get your pen ready, because I'm going to have you circle some things. Here we go. Ready? Jesus said, came near, and Jesus said to his disciples, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So question, is Jesus Lord of it all? Absolutely. Now watch this. Circle the first word. Let's say it out loud. Ready? Go. One more time, just so I know everybody got it. Go. Go, Go, therefore, and circle these two words. Make disciples. Make disciples where? Of all the nations of the world. Is there any place in the world that's off God's radar? No, no, no. Does God care about every single person, every ethnicity, Every language, every people group of the world, does God care about them? Yes, they're all created in his image and he wants them to know his son. Go and make disciples of all the nations. And when you make a disciple, when you bring them to that point where they make a decision to follow Christ or not, and when the ones who say yes to Jesus, what do you do with them? Here's what Jesus said. Now baptize them, circle that and say it out loud. Ready, one more time. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, I love, I love the fact that then on the day of Pentecost, Peter says, and baptize them in the name of Jesus. And sometimes people in church world get all weirded out and they say, oh, that's two different baptisms. Which one do we do? No, they're not. They're the same one. Because there's only one name given whereby man may be saved. There's only one name to the Father, one name to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's through the Son. So in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, what are we doing? We're bringing people into Jesus. And, and, and we're saying, go public with Jesus. 
And then he says, and teach them, circle that, and teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. So if you were there, here's how that would have went. Jesus would have had you there on top of the mountain and he would have said, hey, boys and girls, because I love the fact that women were in the group as well. And that's very important because in that, in that time period, women were excluded from much of society, but not with Jesus. Jesus invites men, women, boys, and girls and every ethnicity and every race saying, come to me because God loves you and God wants you to know me. And he says to his disciples there on top of the mountain that day, right before he ascends to heaven, Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go do exactly what I've been doing for the last three and a half years. I want you to go do exactly what the Father sent me on the earth to do. do you, are you catching the drift here of the weight of this incredible privilege? God says, I want you to do what I have been doing on the earth. I'm giving the responsibility to you, my followers. Go and make disciples, then baptize them. Help them go public about their faith. Help them never to be ashamed of me, and I'll never be ashamed of them. And then teach them everything I've been teaching you. Now you think about the weight of that. Think about your own journey and where God has brought you and where he is bringing you. And then think about it this way. God wants you to take what he's already taught you and pass it on to someone else. You say, but wait a minute, wait a minute, pastor. I got so much more I need to learn. I got so much farther I need to grow. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, give yourself some grace. God only wants you to teach me what you already know. And then as God continues to grow you, you'll have more to grow. But don't wait until you reach some kind of level where you say, now I can go and share. Listen, you know what the one thing is every one of you can share with someone else today? Is your personal testimony, your personal time you've had with God. You may have only been a Christian for six weeks. Well, guess what? You've got six weeks of testimony that you can share with someone new to the faith or someone who hasn't made that decision yet. Share where you are. And Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go do this. And how many know it's not a one-time stop journey? It is a journey, right? It's not a one-time stop destination. It's a journey that you've got to be on. It's a quest. And Jesus has given this responsibility over to us. And listen, when I'm coaching these churches, it's really fun to go in the room and say, okay, what's your church's mission? And people start scrambling. All right, all right, I got to say the right thing here, right? I mean, what, what should our church be? And, 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 the, and the deal is, the deal is, listen, listen, listen. Any true Bible-believing church can only have one mission. It's got to be the Great Commission because it's his marching orders he gave to us. Now, what, when we ask that question, what we're actually doing is we're saying, okay, you need to be able to internalize it for you. How are you going to do this? Make disciples, baptize them, teach them the ways of God. Grow, bring people to Christ, helping them go out for Christ and help them to grow up for Christ. And you can say it however you want to. So here at CPC, here's how we say it. So on your message notes, write this down. Here at CPC, we use three simple words because I like to keep everything simple. And here it is. Connect grow and go. Say those out loud with me. Ready? Everyone here and online, just go ahead and type it in the chat line. If you're online, that way everybody will know you're listening. All right, here we go. Connect, grow, and go. Our goal is to help people make disciples. We want to help you connect, first of all, to God through his son, Jesus, but then understand that God doesn't want you to live out your faith alone. He wants you to connect to one another. So connect in horizontally and ver uh, vertically and horizontally to God and to people. We want to connect. And then we want to help you grow in your faith. We want to help you grow. And that's why we, we have groups and the re reason why you do teaching, preaching with outlines. And, and so I want to help you grow. And, and then and while we do 21 days of prayer and fasting, and then we want to help you go. We want to help you go out in public and, and never be ashamed of Jesus and, and go help others understand that as you become a follower of Jesus, here's a mission you're to live your life on. What is that mission? You're to go help make disciples and you're to baptize them and you're to teach them. And then what do you do with those people? You teach them that they got a mission. What is the mission? To go make disciples and help baptize people and to teach them. And then when you got that group, what are you going to do? You're going to teach them. Part of your teaching is now you got a mission. Go live on mission. What is the mission? Is anybody seeing a rhythm here? Somebody shouts, not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. 
Go make disciples and baptize them, help them go public and then help them go out, uh, go out and then help them to grow up by teaching them the word of God. It's not hard. It's very simple. And Jesus gave this to us. Now, the key there in the, in the verse is the very first word I had you circle and yell out. What was it? Go. Because the church is supposed to be proactive, not reactive. And what happens when we forget about our mission is we become internalized and the culture around us, the world around us is changing and we don't change to get the gospel out to them because we've lost touch. And then they come into the church and then churches become reactive. They got to start switching stuff up on the inside now to try to relate. And it's too late at that point. We're not supposed to be reactive. We're supposed to be proactive. We need to be the ones out in the community. We need to be the ones always pushing the envelope to bring more people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to live on mission. And while we're living on mission, there are three, three pieces to this system that can encourage you. Three experiences that you need to have on a regular basis that'll keep you motivated and keep you focused when these pistons are running in the right order. Here's the first one. Here's the one we're going to deal with today. One of the things that God has called his church to do, his people to do, in fact, we see it from the time Jesus was with his disciples. It's the model the early disciples followed. It's the ones that was passed on to the next generation of believers and all the way now, 2,000 years, here we are this morning on campus in Jackson, Missouri, or online all over the world. And what are we here to do? Why do we gather this morning? Here's the purpose according to Scripture. God has called us to connect. We are to connect. We're to connect vertically to God. We are to connect horizontally to one another. And we need to do this through regular gatherings. We need to do this as a pattern of discipline. It needs to be something we are about on a continual basis basis. Take your message notes, take your outlines, and let's go together to Acts chapter one. And I want you to write this down because I believe this with all my heart. Number one on your message notes, gathering together is essential for success with your quest. Oh, that was good. I didn't even, I didn't even when I wrote it, I didn't even think about how that sounded. I like that. I'm going to say it again. Say it with me. Gathering together is essential on your quest for success or success for your quest. I, I forgot how I said it the first time. I was waiting for you to leave me. Just somebody shout, we got to gather together. We got to gather together, right? It's essential on our quest. And this is the model that these early Christians followed. In fact, we just read the Great Commission. And I don't know why Matthew stopped recording. I think he must have just been caught up. But we know that wasn't the end of the conversation. When you go to Acts chapter one, Luke is telling us there was more that was said that day just before Jesus ascended to heaven. Here's what happened after Jesus gave the great commission or just before. We don't know exactly where it fit in. We know it happened on the same time period though. Here's what happened. Look at verse four. While Jesus was with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. Everybody shout, wait. Wait for what? The Father's promise. Verse 8 tells us what that promise was. Jesus says, you will receive power. Everybody shout, power. That's the word dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. It means explosive power. There's this explosive power that God is going to give you. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit. And when he comes upon you, you will be my, why does the Holy Spirit come upon us? It's so that we can be his, you see the word? Circle it, shout it, come on. So you can be his witnesses 
And then he gives it to their context. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Don't get caught up with that. Just get caught up with this. What was Jesus saying to these folks? He said, I want you to gather together and I want you to pray and I want you to seek for the promise of the Father. And what is that? It's the Holy Spirit. And what's gonna happen when he comes upon you? He's gonna empower you. He's gonna put Holy Ghost dynamite on the inside of you. He's gonna energize your faith. And when he moves inside of you and he fires up your faith, you will go to every context in your life, local, regional, even the world itself, you will, there will be no place off territory for you. You will go no place off limits. You'll go to all the world and you will be an unashamed witness of my glory. How many unashamed witnesses of the glory of God are in the house today and watching online? Can I hear from you? Anybody unashamed of Jesus? So, so write this down, write this down, write this down. One of the things we were commanded by Jesus to do when we gather together, and this is something that should be happening even this morning. It's one of the reasons that Michael came out here and led us into this time of prayer over 21 days of prayer and fasting. Why? Because we need to be praying to seek the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We all need, as believers, the power of the Holy Spirit so we can be successful on the quest. Amen? And being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time occasion. The, the word in the Greek literally means to continually be filled. We need the filling of the Holy Spirit every day. We need to come under subjection to the Holy Spirit every moment of every day because you just don't know what God might be up to today yet. You don't know how he's going to use you when you leave this place today. You don't know how he's going to use you before you leave the place today. There are moments that the Holy Spirit of God needs you to be ready. And at his uh, moment when he says, hey, I need your attention. You need to be ready to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be empowered by him. At one for personal victory. You know, our theme is praying, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But as I said, it has to first happen in you. The first prayer you need to be praying, God, is I need the power of the Holy Spirit to bring the kingdom of God in my life. There are areas in my life, and I don't know what it is for you, but you need to pray it. God, what is the area in my life I need a breakthrough? What sin do I need victory over? What temptation do I need victory over? Where do I need help? Where do I need strength? Where do I need wisdom? Where do I need you to move? And we pray that personally, but then when we pray it personally, now all of a sudden we're ready to be able to do that in the life of someone else. And then God, as you bring the kingdom into my life, now God, empower me to be a witness for you to others. Because some of you know Christianity isn't all supposed to be tied up just in you after you become a Christian. Come on, somebody. If that's all God's looking for is that you made a decision, he would have raptured you straight to heaven. But if he didn't, if you're still here, then it's not all about you anymore. It's about you growing in Christ so that he can use you to be a vessel for someone else. To be a witness for Jesus to be a testament of his power and his glory. Look at how he says it in verse 12 and 13. Then they, are, they returned. This is what happened that day. So those disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem. And when they arrived, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying and they all, everybody shout all. all. And they all continually united in prayer along with the women. Love, I love that. They all came together and they made it a serious desire, a dedication to come together. In fact, don't ever complain about an hour and 20 minute church service here. They were in this room praying for 10 solid days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next time you look at your clock and that, I'm still up here preaching, just shout, at least it's not 10 days. Come on, somebody. Woo, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Here we go. If you grew up in churches I grew up in, four hours was a normal service. Come on, somebody. You just don't know how much I cut it down for you. Here we go. <laughs> just, just keep moving on. I, I'm going to get off. I'm good telling stories. Here we go. They were to come together to pray to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So on your 21 days of prayer and fasting, I'm praying for you to pray first of all for yourself and then pray how you can be a witness. 
empowered for yourself, and then pray, how can I be a witness? Two ways to pray there, amen? Then, then notice this, we're, ga- we're called to gather not only to pray and seek the power of the Holy Spirit together so we can be better witnesses, but we're also called to inspire one another. Write this down. We are called to gather to inspire one another. So in that 10 day prayer meeting, we don't know which day it was, but in that 10 day prayer meeting, while they're praying, the Bible says in verse 15, that Peter stood up among the brothers and the sisters. The number of people were about 120. And here's what Peter does. He stands up and he says, brothers and sisters, it was necessary for the scriptures to be fulfilled. And then he quotes to them Psalm 65, 69, verse 25. And so watch this, watch this, watch this. When Christians gather, they should pray and seek the power of the Holy Spirit for themselves and to be a witness. Then there needs to be moments where we inspire one another. This is something you can't get if you live out your faith outside of coming to a gathering. And I pray that it's something you find value in coming together on this campus or gathering with other believers online. I pray that you realize that when we come together, What we can't do on our own is inspire one another. This should be a motivating house. This should encourage you that when you leave here, you can't wait until you gather again next week. And you just think about all that God's doing. And it encourages you that on Monday, you can grow deeper with God on Monday. And it'll encourage you that on Tuesday, you can be a great witness for Jesus on Tuesday. And it gives you something to long for and to look for and to say, man, when I'm with that group, when we're singing together, when we're praying together, when we're studying the scriptures together, it does something on the inside of me. It makes me come alive. I love it when people leave church going, woo, wow. And they get on social media all day, Sunday afternoon going, can you believe how many people were baptized today? Can you believe how many people has come to faith this year? Can, can, can you imagine? Man, when we were singing that song, when, when the altars filled up at that time, when, when this point was made in the sermon, I always throw it in there. I don't know if it ever happens, but I'm just hoping, all right? It's just, but when that sermon came out, man, it just inspired me. It fired me up. Whatever it was. The coffee was extra good today. I, when you leave a gathering, where you came for the right reason. You can always expect the Holy Spirit to do something special. And it fires you up on the inside. Peter stood up and he started preaching. You should always have the inspiration of the word of God. In fact, Paul said this, 1 Timothy 4.13, until I give, until I come, Paul says to Timothy, give your attention to the public reading, the exhortation and the teaching of the word of God. We should always be going to the word of God to find the inspiration that we need and and exhort one another, encourage one another with the scriptures, not condemning, not tearing down, building each other up and then teaching each other how to live out the faith. This is a system that uh, the writer of Hebrews is talking about. Years after this happened, years after this happened, we come to the book of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. Look at it with me and understand this before I ever read the verse. The verses, understand this. This was written to Hebrews who were struggling about coming to faith in Jesus because of the persecution they were under. That a public gathering for these Hebrews of worshiping Jesus and praying together could involve persecution of them. Families to reject them. They could even be arrested, beaten, stoned, or executed in certain areas because of their faith in Jesus. So it wasn't easy. And it wasn't like waking up like we do and going, huh, do I really want to get out of bed today? What's the temperature outside? Is it raining? That's easy for us, right? And we make, that wasn't for them. They were like, do we want to go gather today? Wonder where the Romans are. It might mean our life. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, here's what it says. And let us consider one another. Underline that right there and read it out loud one more time. Ready, go. Let us consider. I'm going to come back to that and I don't want you to miss it. 
And, and let us consider one another to, to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other all the more as you see the day approaching. And see the word day, circle it and say day. That is a reference to the day of the Lord. One day when the Lord comes back. Now, I, I don't know if you think much about that, but it, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about that when COVID hit. We saw real quickly, and I'm not, I don't think COVID was the mark of the beast or anything like that, or the vaccines, don't go there. But what it did is it showed us just how quickly the whole world can flip. And then when you go to Revelations and you read one day where you'll have to have a certain mark in your hand or forehead to buy or sell, we can see the framework of how that could happen someday now, right? I mean, for 2,000 years, Christians read that and was like, oh, that never happened. <laughs> We can see the framework now. Now you've got Russia invading the Ukraine. And I hope and pray that you're praying for peace. Peace for Russia and the Ukraine. Both need to come to Jesus and have peace and healing. And there's people who are suffering and, and innocent lives have already been lost. And you need to pray about that. But when you see that now, you've got politicians talking about, we're on the brink of a world war. And there's fear. And you watch the media, man. You watch the news. You, you, it's nerve wracking, right? It should be. I don't know if you ever think about it, but one day Jesus is going to come back. And, and as we see all this stuff happening in the world, the writer here says, and this was 2,000 years ago, people. He said, or she said, whoever wrote it, they said, we don't need to stop gathering together. We need this more now than ever. We need what can only happen when we gather in this room more than ever. We, we need one another to come alongside to pray and seek the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm going to be honest, some days my faith isn't where it ought to be. Your faith can give me strength. And some days yours isn't there and my faith can be there for you. We need this together. And there's just something that happens when we're all singing. Amen. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Come on, somebody. And in the whole room, you start feeling the moving of the Spirit of God. And you're like, wow, God's saying to all of us at the same time, I'm still here. Mm. And we need these moments to connect to God and then to one another. And we need to get to the Word and get out of the news and inspire ourselves again with the Word of God that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. That all who call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. That he, he, It's not over till He says it's over. Well, I can preach right there. Y'all want me to? I, just, I, got, I got more to cover. And y'all want to eat lunch for some reason. Come on. And you're supposed to be fasting. Shame on you. Here we go. We got to have this now more than ever. But can I, can I, throw, can I throw it a little deeper? Do you see that first line I had you to underline? Read that first line one more time. Let us consider one another. Can I tell you one of the most important reasons you need to gather at church on a weekly basis has nothing to do with what you need, but it's about what you need to do for someone else. I can't speak to other cultures. I can speak to American culture. And I can tell you one, one of the things that is killing us is this individualized view of church that I come here to see what it can do for me. After you become a Christian, now before you're a Christian, I get it. But after you become a follower of Jesus, I need to, I need to tell you something. It's not all about you now. You're to be on a quest. You're to be on a mission. Now it's about what you can do to inspire someone else. So, so if you're a believer and you don't like the music, I'm okay with that because I know you got seven days in the week. You can listen to any music you want to go listen to worship. However you want to worship. But when we come in here, we got a bigger purpose than just your individual preference. If you don't like how long I preach or the way I preach and I had, I am not gotten any complaints about that. <laughs> I'm just using it as an example. My staff gets them all the time, but they don't tell me about them. All right, here we go. <laughs> you can listen to anybody you want to listen to all week. 
But you're only going to have one preacher on the stage on Sunday here. And I'm preaching to non-believers and believers and everyone on every field all at the same time. And I take this seriously. You don't like the color scheme? Go paint your own house whatever color you want and look at it all week. <laughs> you don't like sitting so close to people? We too big? When you're at home, make your family sit on the other side of the room. <laughs> Give yourself some personal space. But when you come in here, get over it. This is not about your personal preference. Let us consider one another. It's not about you now. It's about you being the vessel for God. Because listen, if you're saved, you're saved. Anybody got their name written in heaven's book? How many know there ain't enough bleach in hell to get your name out of the book? Come on, somebody. I got more assurance than some of you'd be comfortable with if you knew it. All right. You know what I'm talking about? Now we're here and especially our weekly gatherings, is not only to inspire us, but more for us to inspire other people, and especially those who don't know Jesus yet, to bring them here that they can hear the gospel. So can I tell you one of the greatest spiritual mature things you can do on a weekend here is open the door for someone. Because you don't know if by opening the door and welcoming them with a smiling face, might just be what breaks down the barriers for them to come in for the first time and hear the gospel and be saved. Okay, can I give you some more illustrations? Rocking babies in the nursery could be one of the most spiritual things you could do for the kingdom of God on a weekend because you give the parents an opportunity to come and hear the gospel and you don't have any idea what they've been through all week. Working in our special needs ministry, you let those families come in here and be refreshed and have an hour and 20 minutes where they get built back up to go face all the struggles that they got to face through the week. Man, they look at you like you next to Jesus. Are you listening to me? Running a golf cart in a parking lot, helping direct people through this building, just coming in here every week and being ready to look at someone and at the prompting of the Holy Spirit say, hey, how you doing? No, 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 for real. How you doing? Somebody goes to an altar, you being willing to get out of your seat and walk up there and put your hand on them. You may not even know that person, but when you start praying for them, they feel the strength that they've been longing for all week long. And they realize I'm not going to fight my battles alone. <clears throat> I'm about to shout right now. Y'all, y'all better, y'all better get in here with me or I'm going to run. You ready? I'm about to run. I had somebody in the last service say, when are you ever going to turn loose? I'm about to. <laughs> Don't you ever think what we do here on Sundays is just going through motions. Let us consider one another. Think about someone other than yourself. One of the most spiritual things you can do on your way to church to get your heart right is say, Holy Spirit, I open myself today to be your vessel. If I have a role, Use me in that role in a mighty way. And if I don't have a responsibility that day, make me a vessel that you can call on. Tap me on the shoulder and tell me to get in the game. I'm ready. Can, can I just say something real quick? I, I know my time's done. I still got one more point to go. I'll do it quick. Loosen up. You're fasting. You don't need to get there anyway. Every Sunday when I'm coming here, I get here early. 7.30, because we have a run-through. Sound checks, all that jazz. I thank, I thank God for those volunteers, don't you? They get here early, long before you ever got here. Thank God for them. But there's a group that gets here before they get here. And every Sunday, as I'm pulling into church, there's a line of traffic pulling out of the church. They're a group of men in a small group on their own they chose to start gathering out here on this property, 6, 6.30, every Sunday morning, and they pray over this whole campus. And they've never told anybody. They're going to be mad at me now. <laughs> but I just think we ought to thank God for people who think about other people. Amen. 
What are we to do? We are to provoke one another. I like that word. I like it. I'm mischievous enough to use it. We're, but we're to provoke one another. Look at it, read it, and circle this. We're to provoke one another to love like Jesus and to do good works, live out our faith, and to encourage one another. This ought to be the most motivating place you get to go to all week long. And we encourage each other from the pew to the lobby to the parking lot. So we ought to be encouraging one another. When we built this building, my, my number one objective was I wanted the biggest lobby we could afford. And that one's too small. Just so you know my heart. Because I don't want you coming and sitting in a church service and then leaving and being like, whoa, I did my spiritual. No, 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 no. The most, some of the most spiritual moments you'll have today is before and after the service if you will not run out the doors and you stop and meet somebody. Because that's where connections will take place. That's where you can pray for someone. That's where you can walk up and ask them how their week's been. That's where you can walk up to somebody and say, I got you covered in prayer this week. I don't know what you're going through, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, I'm going to pray for you all week. Out there in that lobby. Y'all said I could keep going. I'm going to give you the last points now to bless your heart and let you out. You ready? We gather to pray and seek the power of the Holy Spirit. We gather to inspire one another and we gather to worship. And when I'm talking about worship, I'm talking about we yield to God in worship. The word worship is the same, has the same definition whether you read it in Hebrew or read it in Greek when you come to the New Testaments. In, in the Hebrew, it's shakah. In, in the Greek, it's proskonio. And it means the same either way. It means to bow oneself down in reverent fear. This is like John on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation when he saw the Lord Jesus in his glory. The one who used to lay his head on Jesus' chest. The Bible says in Revelation chapter one that he, when he saw the Lord in his real form, in his true glory, he fell prostrate down to the ground. It has nothing to do with music. It has nothing to do with any of that. You know what it has to do with? A heart bowed low. And then when that shows up in music, it, it becomes worship. And when that shows up in giving tithes and offerings, it becomes worship. When that shows up in loving on people and praying for people, that becomes worship. And so when we connect together, we're connecting to God. And when we connect together, we connect with one another. And throughout your quest, just please listen. Being disciplined to have regular moments like this are going to be vital for you to stay spiritually healthy and fulfill the quest that God has put you on. There is a reason behind church services, after all. There is a purpose behind our gatherings, after all. And I want you to write this down because this is a time for us to be relational and formational at the same time. Relational, and we're building a relationship with God and with one another, but also formational. The more we spend time growing in God and growing in one another, the more we start looking like Jesus looked. Amen? So write it down. For relational and formational at the same time. How did that look with these early Christians? Well, let's just read it as we close. Acts chapter 2. Verse 42 through 46, you have it there? Read it out loud with me, ready? These early Christians, what did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking bread and prayer. That's communion and prayer, right? Look at verse 43, what happened when they did this? Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Because as I said earlier, you can't gather together for the right reason and not experience the moving of God through his spirit. He's going to touch somebody today. Amen. And verse 44 says, and now all the believers were together. They held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and they distributed the proceeds to anyone who had need. So they gave sacrificially. They thought about others above themselves. Look at verse 46. Shout this, 
Just, just go ahead and start reading it with me out loud. Ready, go. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. Now we'll get into house to house next week, but think about this. Every week they gathered together and sometimes daily in the temple. Now, now look up here and let me tell you something real quick. Now I'm about done. The temple wasn't a Christian temple. It was a Jewish temple. They weren't welcome to worship Jesus there. But they knew that on their quest, it was vital that they gathered together anyway because they needed one another. Do you see that? This week, my heart broke when I, I read some quotes out of the Ukraine. One of the things that some of the Ukrainian Christians said that they dreaded the Russian invasion the most for, listen, this was their number one dread, is they said it's the, it's the Russian tactic that whenever they come into a country and take over, the first thing they do is shut down public gatherings of Christian worship. Listen to the heart of the Ukrainians with Russia on their doorstep, about to invade. This was right before the invasion. They said their number one dread was they wouldn't get to gather together as Christians like this. I say that to say this. One, I want you praying for those Christians right now and pray for the heart of Russia as well. And I want you to think about that so you don't take this for granted this morning. Don't ever take this for granted. And those of you who are with us on the online campus, I know I've talked a lot about the gathering together and I know there are some for health reasons are just not comfortable coming back together into a, a congregation like this. I have no condemnation, I understand. But if you're online, please listen to me real quickly. If you're gonna be on the online campus, please don't just be a viewer, be a participant. Take time to chat with other believers on the chat lines. You can encourage others. You could actually pray for other viewers right now online. Go from being a, a, an attender, an observer, to a participant. You can talk to our online pastors. They're there to answer questions. They're there to pray for you. You can also invite people to join you online right now. There's, there's one partner in our church who every Saturday sends out an evite to all of his contacts for people to to worship with him at 8.45 and 10.45 every Sunday morning online. I get it. Whether you're on campus or online, we can encourage and inspire one another. Amen? Amen. Somebody shout, we need this. Yes. If you believe that, would you stand with me? And let's lift our hands up to the Lord. <clears throat> Holy Father, God, today our hearts are just turned back to this mission that you have placed us on. God, we're, in a, we're on a quest. We, we've got a journey. We're walking with you, but there's a purpose behind it. There's a mission. We are to go and make disciples and baptize them and teach them and send them back out to do it all over again. Father, we need to be reminded that of ourselves. And, and, and sometimes it gets difficult and Lord, thank you. Thank you that you called believers to gather together because we need this. We need these moments together. We need to inspire and encourage each other. Thank you for this, Father. Don't let us ever take it for granted. We pray for those who are in countries like the Ukraine that that's threatened. We, we pray for those in Asia, in certain parts of the uh, Central, South American countries and, and some other locations around the world where, Father, they don't have this freedom. The Middle East and sections of Africa, there's not that freedom to worship like we have today. I pray for them. Some of them may be watching this morning. I want them to know, God, we lift them up to you. God, we need this gathering time. Encourage us, Father, to live on mission for you. To live on mission and inspire one another. And Father, we thank you that every time we gather together and our hearts are turned to you in worship, you do something miraculous. And we leave in awe 
May we never get over the all of you, O oh God. God, we love you today in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed. No one's looking around. Just seek the Lord. Just pray. Say, God, let your kingdom come in me. Let your kingdom come and transform my life and then use me to go take it to the world. And if you're here today or watching online, never giving your heart to Jesus, today the Holy Spirit is knocking. The Holy Spirit's giving you that moment in time for you to make a decision about Jesus. If you're ready to follow Christ, would you pray this simple prayer with me? I can't pray it for you, but I can lead you. Just say, Lord Jesus, today by faith, I give my heart to you. I ask you to forgive all of my sin. And from this day forward, I will follow you. I receive you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, can we give him the best praise of the morning right now? Come on. Amen. 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 If you prayed to receive Christ, I'd love for you to walk up to someone up here in the front or out in the lobby that has a red bag. They'll give it to you. It's our gift to you online. Tell one of the online pastors right now. They'll mail it to you, okay? God bless you this morning. Let's lift our voices one last time in a song before we go. And let's go on mission in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's sing together.
And I've played the fool And I hid from you You still called out my name When my flesh is weak Will you help me see You are all that I need You are all that I need God give me a heart abandoned Ever after Praise one last time.